everybody. Welcome. I am so excited about this presentation. We want to welcome all the students who are here to join. You are our pre-members. Some of you may be members, but um, this is something I actually, when I knew that we were going to be doing this, I was excited because I wish that when I was in college, we had had the, uh, these kind of webinars regarding the unions. I knew I wanted to be an actor and I didn't know anything about the unions other than I needed to join one if I wanted to work as a professional. So this is a really great webinar. It's something that will help to inform you as you move forward in creating and expressing your, you know, developing your careers. Uh, it's a presentation just to give you a general understanding of our organization, the knowledge of the key benefits that our members are entitled to, because when you're a member, there are so many things that are available to you to help enrich your, uh, your career and your craft. So that when you do go and enter into this unknown universe, which is changing exponentially, you will be prepared and you will be supported to be the best you can be. So I know you're anxious to get started, probably have tons of questions. So I just want us to jump right in. I'd like to introduce uh, my actually very dear friend and colleague, somebody who makes an incredible difference within our union. She is uh, Rebecca Damon. She is our executive vice president and uh, second top leader of this union. She really has helped to shape a really, uh, shape our union in a way that's really profound for our members. So please welcome without further ado, Rebecca Damon. Uh, hi Rebecca, thank you for being here. Oh my gosh, thank you Gabrielle and thank you for your leadership and for all that you uh, do for not just our members, but for our members to be. And today is really just a discussion for people that are our pre-members. And I know you share this philosophy with me and the other leaders of the organization that, that to be a member of SAG-AFTRA, it's a real milestone, but it's actually a journey that you begin before you're ever actually a member. You're actually part of our family now, and you're part of our family now because we know that as part of a professional career, this is going to be a big milestone for you. So we're, we're excited that you're here with us today. We think it's just, you know, it's, it's an incredible journey to be on, to be thinking about being a sag after member. And we can't wait to officially welcome you one day at your new member orientation. But for now, we just kind of want to get started and talk a little bit about who we are and what we do uh, in terms of our union, what sag after is and, and what that uh, means uh, for us. So I'm going to start by just uh, letting you guys know a little bit about sag after and what it, what it is and what it does. Uh, sag after is obviously a labor union, and we represent people in the entertainment and the media industry, uh, things like movies, TV, uh, new media, radio, commercials, corporate educational, interactive, like a, a video game, other areas. We have, you know, sound recording artists, like if you think about Lady Gaga, all of that. But, you know, at the end of the day, all of our different areas, whether it's broadcast, entertainment, it, our mission is actually very simple. We are here to protect and empower entertainment and media professionals uh, across the globe. We are known as being a tough negotiator, a strict contract enforcer, and really a well-run institution. And we are a proud member of the AFL-CIO, which is uh, uh, nationally, uh, all the labor unions from around the country, the wonderful AFL-CIO, which uh, uh, Gabrielle is a, a vice president of. We also partner with other labor unions in our industry, things like the Directors Guild of the America, like the DGA, uh, the IATSE, the Teamsters, the Writers Guild of America East and West, all of these folks, and internationally also. We're very involved in making sure that we are strengthening and protecting media audience, not just in, in the United States, but all around the world. So it's really good that you're here with us today, wherever you're watching from. We are engaged as we speak with governments, uh, whether it's federal, state, local, and making sure that our policy impacts internationally in the way that we want it to. So we want to protect entertainment media artists, both at home and abroad. Now, a little bit about sag -Aftra. So it's all those letters. It's the alphabet soup of letters. So let's just talk about where that comes from. We come from sag -Aftra, Screen Actors Guild, which was founded in 1933, and the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists was AFRA. There was no T because it was founded before television in 1938. Add the T later, come up to 2012, SAG-AFTRA merged. We became one union and SAG-AFTRA was born. 
which made us so much more powerful in the industry. SAG-AFTRA is a union that has 160,000 members with earnings that are around $5 billion. Now that is billion dollars with the B each year on our contracts. That's a, that's a lot of work and a lot of years of negotiating strong contracts across all industries for our members. So when you think about SAG-AFTRA, what is SAG-AFTRA? You, you've told me we're a labor union, you've told me what, a little bit about what you do, but, but really, what is it? What SAG-AFTRA is, in a simple sentence, is we are the faces and voices that entertain and inform both America and the world. So that's actors, broadcasters, singers, dancers, stunt performers, recording artists, performers of all types. Anybody that works in front of a camera or behind a microphone, you should be SAG-AFTRA. SAG-AFTRA is also the mark of distinction. It really is a huge transition in your life. We're a national union. We are our headquarters in Los Angeles and we have a second national office in New York. Uh, so, and I'm from New York, so second na national office here. Uh, but we really are a nationwide union and that is where our real strength comes from. We have locals all across the country, everywhere from New England to San Diego, Hawaii, Miami, everywhere in between. And that is part of how we not only have our strength, but that is where we get a lot of our greatest leaders are from all around this country. So what we do, what's the main focus of this SAG after that you're talking about, Rebecca? Well, what we do is we are here to protect and empower. So we do things uh, like our core functions, which you'll see on screen. We have collective bargaining. So that's when we negotiate contracts for wages and working conditions for our members. So that is how we set a floor. Obviously, you can always negotiate your own leverage beyond for other things you want, but we set a floor and that's incredibly important. We also administer and enforce contracts for things like uh, anything that might happen. Let's say some, there's a, uh, something on set and you're due more money. You can file a claim. And that is an incredibly important thing for sag after members. We organize new work. That's critically important. We're always trying to bring more work for our members. We also process residuals, which is more money in members' pockets. And that is critically, critically important. Uh, because at the end of the day, we all want to be able to make a living in our chosen fields. So sag after also does options for health care, uh, pension for when you retire. We authorize use of members' work. And we have a very active government affairs and public policy, both committee and department, that help influence policy that matters to our members, whether that's on the state, the city, the federal level, and like I mentioned earlier, all around the world. So just to give you a, a little bit of sense, we, I mentioned the word residuals, and residuals is one of our very favorite words at SAG-AFTRA. And what is that? So you're probably saying to yourself, I've heard of residuals. So what it is, you are compensated to work originally on the show, but this is uh, compensation paid for either a movie, a TV show, a commercial, beyond the period of that initial compensation, beyond that initial use. And we have a really great pro program that we started a little while back where residuals can be available through direct deposit. And in a time when we're in the middle of a pandemic, having that direct deposit uh, has been very meaningful, we know from our members. So when you become a member, make sure you sign up for that direct deposit, very important. We have contracts in every single area of entertainment and media industry. So things like TV, theatrical, commercials, corporate educational videos, interactive things like video games, news and broadcast stations, sound recordings, so all of those wonderful recording artists. We have audiobooks, music videos, the list just could go on and on. I could be here all day, but I know you don't have all day. So I just want you to understand that those are some of the things we do. We're currently in the middle of our TV theatrical contract ratification. And this is a very important time for us because we're in the process of this is our most lucrative deal that has ever happened in the TV theatrical history of SAG-AFTRA. So it's, it's really important. And uh, Gabrielle, who was the chair of our negotiating committee, uh, all those member volunteers, along with our professional negotiators, I mean, they just did an amazing, amazing job. Uh, this contract was valued at over $318 million over three year term of the contract. So just think about that. That is an extra $318 million in members' pockets. And in the middle of a pandemic, uh, that is incredibly, incredibly exciting. Um, 
especially in a, a universe where we see so many people around us who aren't able to have those kinds of achievements and we feel so bad for them. We're also very proud of uh, our members and our negotiators for such a great job. It's a 26% increase in the fixed streaming residuals. There are very important new provisions uh, and increase uh, in terms of those for both nudity and simulated sex. We also in the Western zone have uh, se secured in year two of the contract an extra uh, background performer in episodic TV shows in the West Coast zone. So that's really, really important. We also, just to get you a, a little bit more about uh, who we are and what we do. So, you know, I'm not gonna uh, surprise any of you by saying, you know, we work across all networks and platforms. So we have, you're gonna see a wonderful uh, array of screen. I think you're seeing all of them right now of all of the kind of employers who sag after a work safe. And you'll see the vertical integration. Once upon a time uh, in a land far away long ago, uh, they weren't so uh, these transnational corporations. And because they are a transnational corporation, it is so important that all the members who work in entertainment and media uh, be together. It gives us our strength. So we are constantly working in platforms that are changing every day. All of these different distribution models in terms of how content is produced, what work our members do. All of this is really, really critical. Um, we also work in the low budget space. So we have low budget uh, agreements that cover things. And I think it's really important because it's not just about you becoming a sag after member and taking that critical step on your journey. It really also is about in these low budget agreements, we are teaching and working with the next generation of filmmakers so that they understand how to make an affordable, but also professional production. And that is so critical. So we're all growing up together. Um, so we do everything in low budget from student films, which uh, there are probably around, you know, between low budget and student films, around 4,000 of those kinds of agreements every year. It's a great way to get engaged and get experience. And, and at the end of the day, some of this work can be some of the most exciting and interesting work. And I think what's interesting about that is it doesn't mean you have to be a big studio just so you can use professional talent. And that is also just uh, critical. Uh, so I'll just give you guys a little bit of a, a, an idea. Uh, low budget independent filmmakers often are the ones that are producing the interesting, edgy, unique, that kind of content that you might not see at the traditional studios. So if you think of Ava DuVernay, um, uh, and her rise. Uh, so I'm a huge fan. So I'll just do fangirl for a second. Huge fan. So she started out and did her first film under a low budget agreement and she did it for only $200,000. And then the next film that she did was greenlit for a $20 million studio project. And that was Selma. So if you think about it, that journey from that $200,000 budget to $20 million, it was also because she had great psych after members and amazing stories to tell. And we see the amazing stuff she does uh, today. She's just uh, awesome. So if you look at uh, all of her storytelling, you see this great progression and it's, it's really exciting. And we hope that you as members will have your own Ava DuVernay story to, uh, to look at. So sag After is also really focused on new technology and new platforms. And we have really expanded how we are taking a role in this. Uh, our staff team, along with our Innovation and New Technology Committee, have been looking at emerging markets and making sure that we are always as uh, far ahead, whether that's influencers, gamers, and all of those kinds of markets. We were at uh, CES, which for those of you don't, that don't know, it used to be called the uh, Consumer Electronics Show, CES. We've actually uh, had a presence there for years, but we've upped that. Uh, it is part of our commitment to making sure that we are on the cutting edge of understanding how AI, other things in terms of uh, making sure that our digital image rights are protecting, making sure that we really have the ability to not just be paying attention to these technologies, but making sure that we are the proper advocates for our members as we enter a whole new world of work. So I'm gonna shift gears for just a second and talk about safety. And I wanna say this, and I think it's probably first and foremost on our minds you know, today in the world that we're living in, but safety has always been and always will be one of the most important aspects of what we do at SAG-AFTRA. 
And I'm just give you guys a little bit of background. We have had for some time, but I like to make sure people know about it, uh, a, a safety hotline. And this is administered by our professional staff. Uh, and just, just so people know, just in general, our professional staff monitors the safety provisions, the riders, they work with both the members, their agents, managers, their attorneys, labor relations, whoever they need to, to do whatever they can to make sure that members are safe at work. So sometimes though, it's gonna be late at night or something's gonna come up and that's the time when you're gonna need that safety hotline. And that number is 844-SAFER-SET. And what's really terrific about this hotline is we have expanded it over the years to make sure that we can also take calls if somebody is being discriminated, harassed, denied accessibility uh, based on uh, their diversity status or for otherwise. So it's really super important that people have that number. Uh, I'm also honored to be a part of the President's Blue Ribbon Commission on Safety, um, which uh, President Carteris uh, chairs. And this is something, this is really a new critical innovation. This innovation uh, and this uh, expanded focus, because like I said, it has always been a key priority of sag after is member safety. But we are working across all parts of the entertainment and media industry and taking a, a, a leadership role to make sure that we're able to advance these things. So just, just I'll give you an example. During the uh, pandemic, we have been working uh, both with the industry along with the uh, uh, all the other labor unions in the industry on a historic set of protocols for a safer return to work. Uh, those things include vigorous testing protocols, hygiene, uh, a zone system. We've done work in the space of sexual harassment. Our work group in our Blue Ribbon Commission on Safety, our anti-harassment work group has been dedicated on a daily basis to, to not just combating sexual harassment, but thinking through the important ways to create a safer set, set for our members. So we have been working with a fantastic group of intimacy coordinators uh, to help bring more protections to members, working with members on this. And I will just say, SAG-AFTRA always wants to be part of the forefront in the fight for justice, in the fight for combating discrimination of any kind, uh, combating racial discrimination, co making sure that we, when we speak about diversity, we are speaking about true diversity and inclusion. This is a passion of sag as and I think you might tell it's a personal passion of mine. So this is part of who we are and what we do. So we engage our members to protect in power in multiple different ways. We, we have organizing initiatives that take place across all of our contracts. Uh, and we were able to organize our first ever agreement, uh, Telemundo, to cover Spanish language television. And that has been, uh, I mean, that has just been 100% uh, so impressive. And uh, I had the opportunity to spend some time uh, with the members who had organized. This was our first uh, uh, network in 50 years that we were able to organize in this way. And uh, I had some time with our folks as they were negotiating their first contract, those members along with our staff. And what an impressive group of people. Uh, you know, some of them had faced uh, harassment, uh, threats of uh, being deported out of the country, terrible, terrible things. And uh, the strength that they showed in their unity, their ability to know that if they stood together, uh, things could get better. And uh, I'm so proud that they're sag after members. So we're really excited about those kinds of initiatives where we are capturing more work, growing more work. Another area that is uh, of critical importance is union commercials. And in terms of that, we have been working to uh, uh, expand both both to uh, continue to organize but also to recapture union commercials and you know obviously uh, people think about the fair fair wages and working conditions and being able to get a you know better agent and working union in the solidarity but at the end of the day it's also really important and we want to make sure especially since so many of you are our younger pre-members that thinking about when you work a non-union commercial and what that can mean, you can actually create an uncontrollable product conflict. So let's say you do a non-union beer commercial 
uh, which could run uh, in perpetuity. And I'll tell you right now, those are words to look for. Those are, those are dangerous words for a performer. And you could have that running in per perpetuity without additional payment. So your face or your voice could be endlessly associated with that product and you may ne never be able to do a, a union commercial for any beverage in that area. And I mean, that means ever. So you want to make sure that you are working union in commercials and uh, we have a wonderful team. And if you see things and you have questions about that, we have uh, a great AdsGo Union campaign. Uh, AdsGo Union at sagafter.org is their email. You can email them for more information. So we want you to be with us and we want you to protect your future, uh, even if you're not a member yet. Uh, so. We also do a lot of engagement uh, with our, our uh, President's Task Force, which you're here today, but we also do a lot of engagement with our next gen performers, our 18 to 35 ish, whatever, whatever age you are. And the, this group of young professionals have really taken charge uh, of their careers and are finding ways within this union, within this union's leadership to advance, advance their careers, but also advance their union uh, they do a lot in social media, networking, uh, they meetups, tweet ups, all kinds of community outreach. And it is, it's really amazing the kind of uh, things they're able to do. So at any rate, um, just amazing group, the next gen performers. Uh, I want to talk a little bit also about equity inclusion. I, I mentioned earlier, uh, this being a personal passion, passion for me. Uh, it is a core value of SAG-AFTRA that our strength is in our diversity. Uh, that's actually uh, right out of our founding documents. We are committed to the broadest employment and involvement of our members, regardless of race, national origin, ancestry, color, creed, religion, sex, marital status, sexual orientation, political affiliation, veteran status, gender identity, expression, age, or disability. And we have an equity inclusion department and they exist to make sure and help us make sure that we are achieving increased inclusion, equal access to opportunities and protection when work is in our jurisdiction. Uh, this gives me a second to tell you guys, we have some videos that we would normally play if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic and we could all be in the room together. Uh, but uh, just because sometimes those don't come across depending on your bandwidth issues and otherwise on Zoom, online. So uh, on our resource page, all those videos will be there. So you, I hope you'll take a look uh, after the fact. Um, so I just wanna make sure that people are totally aware of that and that you can definitely check it out. So that URL, just so you can catch up with some of those cool videos is sagaftra.org uh, slash whyjoin. So just wanna make sure that you guys uh, know about that and uh, it, it's a lot of really other good resources. So I'm gonna now shift gears into industry relations. So engagement is not just with members, but it is really important to be engaged with the agency so we can expand more opportunities for members in this way. We have our online production center, and that is a way for people to be able to go and see uh, a whole digital workflow. It has FAQs in the production center. You can download forms, contracts, rate sheets, FAQs. So if you are somebody that's looking to hire SAG after members, it's a great resource and it helps to be able to have everything in a one-stop shop. That step-by-step -step, uh, online guide to becoming a producer, very helpful and always expanding and improving. Um, so now, now we're going to pause for a minute and talk about membership. So you're thinking, all right, I've been hanging out here with Rebecca in the middle of the pandemic. We're, we're talking, I want, when is she going to talk about membership? Well, we're going to talk about it right now. Obviously, this is, as Gabrielle mentioned at the top, such a major milestone in a performer's career. And you're wondering, how do I do that? How do I become eligible? How does that work? So there are four ways for that to happen. Those four ways are... You could do one day of work as a principal performer under a SAG after agreement. So you audition and book a job and uh, you're able to join. That is through most of our agreements, uh, though some of our lower budget agreements, it's not quite the same qualification and you can check that out on the website. Or you could do three days of background work under a SAG after agreement or 
uh, door number three, you could be a member in good standing and of, of an affiliated performers union, such as Equity, so or AEA for short, uh, American Guild of Musical Art of Artists, or AGMA for short, uh, American Guild of Variety Artists, or AGVA, ACTRA, which is the Alliance of Canadian Cinema, Television, and Radio Artists, all these alphabet soups. I mean, who is going to take the time to learn all these things? Well, probably you, because you're going to be a professional performer. So you might already be a member of one of these unions. And if you were a member in good standing of one of those unions as your parent union, uh, which is the union that people refer to as the union that they first joined, if you're a member of one of those and have been in good standing for a year, you can uh, uh, look on the website and get some additional details about how to join through our sister union program. Uh, we also obviously re represent broadcasters. And uh, if you are a potential broadcaster, on the way up, you can uh, contact our national broadcast department or your local office and get a few details about how that works. So uh, it's uh, another way that you might uh, be joining the union. So to become a member, you had to first have the, that member el eligibility. Uh, now you have to figure out, you're gonna have to pay what is a joining fee as well as semi-annual dues. And I think it's really important for people to, to understand this because the joining fees can also vary depending on, on where you join and you should contact the local office, uh, which you saw that list and those are all available online uh, for those details. But so the standard national joining fee is $3,000 plus the first semi-annual basic dues. So the 3,000 plus uh, 111, so 3,111 48. So your base dues are two twenty two ninety six per year. I did that from memory. Hopefully it's on screen for you. Plus uh, 1.575 of your salary after earnings up to half a million dollars. And so that is how your dues are calculated. So you have your base dues and you also have your working dues. And so that is uh, every year you do it in the spring and the fall. Um, that is your member obligation. Um, it's important to know, especially that your, your dues are calculated on your prior calendar year. So you're doing those two installments, but you're doing it for, for the year before. So I always say to people, and it's important to start to think about this in terms of how you're going to manage your professional career to make sure that if you have a really great year and you have that, you know, huge commercial or you get cast on, uh, that, you know, TV show, you want to be in a position where if that ends, you've already set aside the money for dues sort of as you go so that you're not surprised in the next year. Because, uh, you know, I hope for you that you have all years full of uh, tons of commercials and series regular jobs on TV shows. But if that doesn't happen, sometimes you want to have planned in advance. And just as a technical detail, it's good to know you can also uh, do your payments by uh, Visa, MasterCard, money order, or check, because uh, a certified check, sorry. Uh, people like to know how to do that. Um, so if you're making this decision, you are now joining uh, one of the most uh, important groups in our industry, and it is really the mark of a serious commitment for serious professionals. And so it's a major, uh, it's a major milestone, it's very exciting, but it's also a responsibility. So we do have some rules that go along with that. Things like uh, Global Rule One. And Global Rule One means that you have made a commitment to only uh, do work that are under a SAG after agreement for an employer who has executed that agreement and that it's worldwide. So you are now making a transition into being a full professional. Uh, and that is one of the areas that we get our strength. Uh, we hope that you're going to want to be involved uh, in SAG-AFTRA, that you're going to find out more. You're gonna, it's a democracy. Uh, we uh, have members that run for uh, uh, the board, for convention delegate, get involved in committees. We want to see you. We want to, as soon as we're able to get back and see each other's faces, we hope that we're going to see you at member events. So it really is, it is run, uh, decisions are made by members and we have a great professional staff in partnership with us that helps us carry all this out. So these, these are part of what you can be involved in. You can come in and talk about the contracts that you work and make proposals to make changes in how that asks. You may be 
uh, trying to advocate for uh, tax incentives in your area or digital image rights. And we want you to be involved in the union to better advance those causes. It really does take all of us. And there are just so many great reasons to be sag after that I think uh, hopefully at the end of this, you will be thinking about uh, what to do, how to join, all of that. But, you know, we should also have a little bit of fun while we're at it. We also have our SAG Awards, which is a, a terrific member benefit that people love, uh, where people are uh, allowed to vote on the recipients of the uh, SAG Awards. Um, I will tell you that uh, having uh, done these meetings over the years in person, I have sat in the room uh, making the same sort of kind of presentation to people who just joined the union and then uh, I've been doing it just long enough where I've been able to say, oh my gosh, I presented to that SAG Award winner and that SAG Award winner. At the end of the day, it really is the mark of distinction. And it is something that we as a union hope for you. We hope that you fulfill yourself and take that excitement from the awards into other aspects of your career. It really is a, a wonderful uh, celebration of what members do. There's also a ton of other member benefits uh, of being a SAG after a member. Things like the SAG after Foundation, the Actors Fund, uh, pension and health uh, plans, which you can earn qualifications into, uh, credit unions. That's just a few of those. And so I want to just shift for a minute and talk just a little bit about the SAG after a Foundation. It is, uh, while separate from the union, just like our health and pension plans are separate organizations from the union, the foundation is a 501c3, which is a nonprofit organization, and it is dedicated to providing both comprehensive, educational, state-of-the-art resources to SAG-AFTRA members. And the SAG-AFTRA believes uh, that it makes real contributions to our cultures by performing artists. It's it's it's. It's not only valuable, but it's but it's really truly essential, and we've had a, a chance to see some of that, which I'll tell you about in just a second. Um, and this is where I'm kind of bummed. You don't get to see the videos, but you'll get to go see them online. Um, it is an organization that is there for SAG after members in the good times and in the bad times, and our assistance programs are there when uh, things get tough. Uh, we have our COVID-19 relief fund for SAG after members. I'm personally very uh, so proud of the work that the foundation has done on this. This relief fund, uh, along with the Motion Picture Player Welfare Fund, uh, is for eligible SAG after members who have been impacted during the pandemic. And it is an emergency financial crisis relief related to COVID-19 to cover basic expenses like rent, mortgage, utilities, medical bears, bills, other, other essential needs. So uh, it really is a, a, a critical uh, element of what the sag after does. But the sag after Foundation also understands that, you know, you know, as artists, we are living in a, a changing world and it's changing all the time. And it's really imperative that actors and broadcasters and voiceover artists, dancers, everybody, people that are doing background work, that we understand the, the, the industry evolving around us, what that landscape is, and that we have the tools to navigate those changes, to make sure that the opportunities that we have to hone our craft can continue as our careers continue. And that is something that the SAG After Foundation, just, it just excels at. Uh, we have all these online programs, and many of them you can partake of before you become a member, uh, though you get even more uh, once you are a SAG AFTRA member. So I urge you to check them out at sagaftra.foundation. That's the website. Uh, for those of you, uh, uh, this is definitely for those of you with uh, uh, younger folks at home, or I'll be honest, uh, or for you. Uh, we have Storyline Online uh, in a time when everything's swirling around us, and especially when people are trying to educate folks at home. Uh, the Foundation's longtime program, Storyline Online, are, is where actors read to children. Uh, it's been uh, Emmy nominated. It is a, a wonderful program, and it is this children's literacy program contributes to spreading creative knowledge, and it's a, really a way for for uh, performers to give back in our communities. And uh, nothing better than uh, being in a movie theater and seeing Chris Pine uh, on the screen and somebody, uh, you hear somebody in the row behind you going, oh my gosh, 
it's it's Clark the Shark, it's Clark the Shark, because they've seen him on Storyline Online, so they know him from those stories. And this is a way that we contribute back to the world and to the next generation of people uh, in a love of literacy. So that's about the foundation. At the end of the day, I hope that you know that we are excited about your journey. We want you to have a, a remarkable life, but we wanna make sure that as professional performers, you make us part of your journey and we can't wait for you to join us. We hope you will take a picture of your sag after card and on our member Mondays once you receive yours. And before then, we hope you can connect right now uh, to make sure to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and really stay up to date on all the things that are happening at sag after. You don't have to be a member to start to benefit from being uh, all the things that membership brings. There will be more when you become a member, but we really appreciate that you are here with us today and we hope that we'll be seeing you in person soon enough. So thank you again uh, for being here. It's exciting and uh, looking forward to uh, some of the questions. So, all right, thank you. All right. So I think we are, Oh, I'm seeing a question. Uh, all right, I've got our first question here. I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking here a little bit. Um, the first question is, I'm concerned about the cost to join, especially during a pandemic. Uh, I really understand that. And uh, you mentioned credit unions. What can you do? Okay, so uh, we mentioned uh, two credit unions, and I'm gonna just give you a little bit of my personal philosophy um, about how to think about this. You, this is not something where you wanna go and put your membership uh, on credit cards, pay exorbitant fees, and that would be true in any day, but it would be even more true uh, during a pandemic. And so I wanna make sure that folks think about there are lower interest ways to do it. There is both the SAG-AFTRA credit union and the Actors Federal Credit Union that offer uh, low interest uh, initiation fee loans, which is a much better deal. Uh, paying huge percentages to credit cards is not a good way to start off your professional career. So look at that or look at other options. I also always say to people, it's super important um, that you are able to um, uh, think this through in terms of your larger financial philosophy. One of the things we also do for members is we have a lot of seminars on uh, uh, how to budget, uh, how to make sure you're managing your life as a professional performer. And it is really important that you take advantage of those as a member. But a good way to start out is to make sure that when you're joining, uh, you're doing it in a smart, uh, responsible way. So just want to make sure that people are aware of that. Okay, uh, let me see, are there more questions? I'm having a little difficulty seeing the questions right now. Um, all right. Oh, here's another one. Uh, okay, so people want to know if they can be a member of both uh, SAG-AFTRA and ACTRA. The answer is yes. If you are uh, uh, doing, if you are a Canadian citizen, um, and I would just like you to know that we have many, many members of both ACTRA and SAG-AFTRA, uh, as well as, as we mentioned earlier, AGMA, AGVA, uh, all those other unions, equity, uh, we all work very well together uh, at protecting performers, uh, and that is um, a really good part of uh, being a member. All right, let me see if I have any other questions. Okay. Uh, okay, so, um, oh, I have a great question here. This is fantastic. All right, so I'm wondering when the right time is to join. I've heard before that it takes some time uh, to be a member and that we don't wanna rush into membership, but I'm very concerned about not being thought as a professional. You know, this is a question uh, that we've gotten a lot over the years. And I think I would say to you, I think it has evolved. Uh, when I was younger, uh, we didn't have as many great low budget agreements as we do now. Now we have an agreement that really covers things 
in every single space. So at any rate, uh, sorry, oh, we're getting more questions. At any rate, I think it's really important to uh, make sure that as you are uh, thinking through when to join, it's a personal decision, but because we have agreements in all of that low budget space, and also because you really wanna be protected and be part of being a member once you're starting to do professional work, it is important that you make that journey into membership so you have all the protections. And the other thing that I would say is, especially in this time of uh, uh, this pandemic, the work that we're doing on safety is absolutely critical. And, and look, I want everybody to be safe uh, during this time, but we have put a lot of resources into uh, making sure that we are providing a safe way forward for people to work. And so at any rate, it's really super critical that uh, uh, being a member gives you the best access to those protections, though we do want everybody to be safe. Okay, let me see if there's any other uh, questions. Oh, gosh, a whole bunch have come in. That's terrific. Uh, you guys are lots and lots of questions. All right. Uh, we t oh, this is sort of a repeat about if we're ready to join. Great. Um, uh, what can I expect in terms of assistance if something goes wrong on set? Well, that's a terrific question. So part of what you'll want to do uh, is immediately call SAG after. SAG after is there for you. Uh, and we have professional staff that are able to discuss those things. Sometimes it's something that's happened and you want to just later on file a claim. But if you're ever in a situation, you want to always call SAG after, call the office, call that safety hotline and make sure that you let us know what's going on. There are times when there's a, a, a working condition that needs to be adjusted. There are times when things like that, we can either work directly with production or we have a great group of field reps that uh, help to make sure that people are being treated fairly and safely. And uh, okay, we've got a question about, I wanna get through as many of these as I can. Um, all right. Uh, I wanna be safe at my workplace, you talked a little, yes, I did talk about those safety protocols. Uh, you can find those even if you're not a member on our website uh, at sagafter.org. Uh, the documents I'd have you look at is the collaborative industry document, uh, which is uh, often referred to in the media as the white paper, and that document is uh, sort of a, a good primer to understand the way the world of work will look. There's also a safe way forward which was a collaborative effort between SAG-AFTRA, the DGA, uh, uh, IATSE, as well as the Teamsters uh, to really make sure that we were doing a deep dive. We worked with expert epidemiologists, virologists, uh, 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 industry sanitation experts, uh, all that, industrial hygienists, to make sure that we were thinking through uh, what the world would of work would look like uh, in this time. And as the science uh, develops and advances, uh, those protocols will also develop in advance. Okay, we've got time for a few more. Let me see. Uh, once you meet the requirement, uh, I'm not sure I understand this one. Once you meet the requirement, oh, uh, so uh, the health plans are, are separate. Uh, the SAG after health plan, uh, the SAG after a pension plan and the after retirement fund are legally separate entities for the union. And yes, you do need eligibility for them and you can find all of that uh, on our website. Um, there's a question that asks about if our uh, dues are taken automatically out or do we pay them, uh, at, you'll pay them twice a year. So no, dues are not, uh, unless you are a broadcaster, which is a little bit different system, uh, dues are paid both in the spring and the fall uh, every year. And as I mentioned earlier, they're based on uh, the previous year. So that's important to know. So that's why I always say to people, save up so that you uh, uh, are planning ahead. All right, um, and you will receive a statement. Yes, thank you. Um, and is there an orientation once uh, we join sag after? Yes, there absolutely is an orientation. And I hope you'll either uh, come visit me in New York or uh, have one around the country. And we're gonna be doing more of these actually online. So I uh, hope you'll be doing that uh, for sure. They're really, 
a great way to get your feet wet and make sure that you're taking advantage of all the great things that being a member has to offer. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, sag -after has agreements. Yes, so if you are working in internationally, we always wanna make sure that you're in touch with our office to make sure uh, you have the right information. Okay. Um, uh, okay, I've got a question about, on sag after book jobs, uh, I've seen that there's a representative that comes to set. Uh, are these, uh, do we have to call them to come? Uh, how does that work? So our field reps make uh, spot checks, make visits to sets that are sag after signatory. And you can always call us to find out who the rep is in your area uh, if you have specific questions, uh, as well as don't ever hesitate to call the union office if there's something that doesn't seem right. It is, it's super helpful that you, uh, we are all each other's uh, eyes and ears. So always good to let the sag after office know if you think there's anything amiss. Um, oh. Okay, this is a great question. What is the best way for a performer who is new to the business to learn about various contracts covered by sag -AFTRA? So if you go to our website, uh, sagafter.org, and you click the contacts and industry resources, you can see all of that information. But we also have, between our YouTube channel and the foundation, numerous Q&As, panels, presentations that walk you through various aspects. So it's really good to, especially in this time where we're all uh, uh, maybe uh, sitting in front of screens a little more often, uh, take a little break from Netflix or whatever else we're doing and get familiar with the SAG after contracts. There are some really excellent, excellent resources online. Um, if I book a job with a SAG after signatory and I am not yet a member, can this make me eligible to join? Uh, yes, if you book a sag after a project and you become eligible uh, to join, it was through those the, the ways to join that we went through earlier. And it's uh, uh, so long as it's one of those contracts, you're good to go. Do vouchers expire? Oh, I think this is about background vouchers. So uh, once you have earned your background uh, 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 voucher, once you have that, they do not expire. Uh, so that's important to know. Um, all right, let me see. I think I have a couple more questions. Um, on a SAG after book job, is there a representative provided or must you, the actor performer call, uh, sag after to be pre okay so i think the question i'm going to just sort of rephrase it for the group if you get a sag after job do you have to call the union to let them know that you're working a sag after job i think i know that this is maybe a little bit pandemic related so uh now if in this time of uh, the pandemic it is great to know to make sure you call the office and have a conversation in the staff we're obviously in a transitional period uh, as people in certain areas are returning to work as as the the legislation in terms of uh, you know you it might be in a place where yesterday folks were able to work and because of new government restrictions you might not be able to work so I would always say uh, right now it's really important to uh, always call the SAG after office especially during the pandemic uh, if you have any questions all right uh, I think I have all the questions uh, that I've got so far. I'm going to look and see if there are any others. And if not, I'm going to thank you guys uh, a whole bunch for being here. It was great to be able to spend uh, this time with you today. I hope you're doing okay. I hope that in the middle of this pandemic, you're taking care of yourself and you are working to do things to advance yourself, uh, advance your career, your life as an artist to make sure that you are uh, making sure you keep the hope going forward. And at the end of the day, I wanna make sure that you are uh, advancing all these things and join us in our engagement. We are, uh, all of this information is available on sagafter.org. We also, uh, like I said, I want you to check out the SAG After Foundation, that's sagafter.foundation. 
follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. And uh, you can get involved in the conversation there. We really are grateful for you being here today. And I just want to thank you very much. So uh, hopefully we will see you on social media. I'm Rebecca Damon for SAG-AFTRA. And I hope you have a great day.